How's it going everyone? Jay from Rabbit Trans Garage. Um, when I was replacing the distributor in the Barracuda, I needed an O-ring for the distributor. Now, uh, I priced them up and uh, online and they were like six or seven bucks for an O-ring. So I did some, did some hunting and uh, if you have the tools to size up an O-ring, you can buy in bulk from a lot of uh, catalog companies and things like that, uh, one of which is McMaster Car. Uh, you can, again, I, I price it out for about six or seven bucks, and uh, with the tools, I sized it up, and I could buy a hundred of them for 11 bucks. Now, it seems like a lot, but if you're doing a lot of work, a lot of engines, um, you need the O-rings, so, it adds up if you're if you're buying them for six or seven bucks a piece, or for two of them for that matter. So what I'm going to show you is a couple uh, couple tools that I use on a daily basis uh, to size up O-rings, and uh, hopefully you get something out of it. Here you go. One of the tools we use is this flip chart. Now you can see there's a bunch of different O-rings on here, various sizes. And these flip charts can be found um, on Amazon. I think they were like 40 bucks, something to that effect. But what you do, there's the O-ring from this distributor. This is a distributor I just had sitting on the shelf. Uh, the one for the Barracuda is actually in the car. But where this O-ring goes is right in this groove. So you can see that from temperature of the engine, things like that, uh, this has cracked, it's very dry, very brittle. Uh, which is typical. So we have our O-ring here. And what you do is you find this legend down here. And this will be your cross section. So you find the appropriate cross section for this particular O-ring. And it looks like a 332nd. So you take the, take the O-ring and you find the appropriate size. So you just lay it over. And what you're looking for is the dash number. So you can see these numbers at the top of the chart. So this is your this is your O-ring dash number right here. Uh, for the bigger O-rings, you got an, like a 400 series for a quarter inch. Uh, this, like I said, this one's 332nd. So you find and you lay it over. And you can see it looks close to a 134. Uh, since this one's cracked, you just got to be try to find it. Uh, it looks a little small for a 134. So we'll bounce it back up to a 133. And it fits perfect. So this is, like I said, you can see the, the varying sizes for the smaller O-rings. Uh, this can be used for any O-ring that that you have in your car there's actually uh another one here for two biddings things like that so basically what you'd be ordering is a dash 133 o-ring um <clears throat> typically in automotive you're gonna have buna o-rings which are typically black uh you they can be like a lot of ac systems things like that uh you'll have green um green o-rings uh, I believe that's HB HNBR. So this is Buna or Buna N or NBR. Uh, and again, Buna is typically black in color. Um, and basically how it works is Buna is basically impervious to petroleums. So fuels, um, oil, and uh, it's basically that's chemical compatibility. Uh, another thing that you'll find in automotive is um, is Viton or FKM um, or uh, like floral Asmer, but typ typically it's it's Viton or FKM. Um, a lot of times FKM can be used in a carburetor for like ethanol fuels. Uh, it, it it's amazing what what uh, some chemicals will do to an O-ring um, if it's uh, not compatible with that with ever's coming in contact with that particular o-ring so another thing that you can do is 
measure your o-ring cross section if you don't have a chart so i have digital caliper here i'll try to do this while holding and you can measure it and then go to a catalog with your cross section measure your groove Oop. measure your groove and then the width of your groove and then you can determine your o-ring that size or determine your o-ring that way as well um, typically the o-rings don't go completely in the groove so uh so that way it has has uh room to move or squash uh, and fill that void um typically with automotive you have a static o-ring um, and I believe it is about 30% compression for a static O-ring um, or for a dynamic O-ring or a moving O-ring, um, which you find in like hydraulic cylinders, things like that. Uh, I believe it's about 40% compression. And again, it can be done the same way. Uh, typically, those are, those are Buna O-rings and hydraulic cylinders because, again, you're coming in contact with petroleum. So, yeah. Uh, typically, oh, another thing that you're going to run into is uh, durometer. So the durometer of the O-ring is how hard it is. Typically, uh, a good, uh, a usual durometer is like 70 to 75. And uh, that's usually what you find in an automotive. It's, uh, you can go up to, I believe, 90, which is a really hard O-ring. So you end up, you don't want to have it too hard so it shears uh, when you're installing it. And you don't want to have it too soft so it just kind of extrudes out from whatever... Uh, whatever you're trying to seal. Another tool that we use is this slide. Now these can be found on, um, these can be found on Amazon for I believe about 20 bucks. Again, it has all your smaller sizes, well not all of them, but a lot of your smaller sizes on here that you may run into. So you could size those up appropriately. Um, I have a couple o-rings here that uh, that I could show you now how this works you can see these slots at the top that's to measure out your appropriate cross-section so you take your o-ring you put it in the groove and find the one that fits so this one measures about 139 thousandths zero this out And that measures about 139 thousandths. Of course, it moved a little bit. So how this works is we determined our slot or the, the uh, cross section of the O-ring. We put it in this pin. And you can see here it has two pins or two half moons and then a dot and then a half moon. So what's that? What we're trying to find or use to measure you got your two half moons here, and then you have a pin on the bottom for large, a lot of larger O-rings. So this one, it's a bigger O-ring, so we're going to use one half moon and then the pin on the bottom. So you slide it. You slide it until it's taut. And use our scale right there, which will show a half moon, and then the dot on the bottom. And then you'll have this window here with the particular size that you're looking for. So this one is, now this is, unfortunately, it's, you kind of go by feel, but there's a little bit of a grace measurement in here. So, so this measures a 272. There's another smaller O-ring, but fatter. Again, find your appropriate groove. This particular one measures right there. So we're going to use this pin. Now, since this isn't big enough to reach the bottom pin, uh, we can use the two top pins. Slide it. That one measures a 342. Get it to focus here. Measures 342. So again, kind of a... Cheap little tool and it, 
a lot of these O-rings you can get um, through like catalog companies. Uh, you could buy them by the piece through uh, uh, Summit or Jags or what have you. Uh, I looked up the, like I said, I looked up the ones for the distributor and they were like six or seven bucks for a couple O-rings, which can add up if you got a bunch of motors going on, but, or any other O-rings on the car. But uh, I measured the 133 O-ring uh, for the distributor and I can get a hundred of them for 11 bucks. Now granted, that's a hundred O-rings, but uh, if you got a got a lot of projects going on it, it it adds up so and they're not just in a car either so um or you can hand them out to your friends for christmas and things like that but uh yeah a lot of the like i said a lot of the uh o-rings that you run across arbuna and viton in an automotive uh automotive world um or like i said viton or fkm uh they also have o-ring splice kits uh which i don't recommend uh because you essentially use super glue and you bond some rubber rope um, to make an O-ring. However, when you're installing them, you have the you have the hard part of the uh, of the super glue, which is pretty hard to compress. So a lot of times you end up breaking or ripping them or shearing them. So uh, if you could size up the proper O-ring um, and then uh, and then get exactly what you're looking for, um, or like I said, you can you can take your O-ring and and out of the parts store and uh, and rifle through their O-ring stock. Uh, a lot of the uh, like Harbor Freight kits, you can get your O-rings that way as well. Uh, they don't the ones that I found they don't list them as a dash number, so um, so they're just little. You don't know the dash number, but again, you can measure them up if you have a have a flip chart or a slide rule. Uh, they also have a cone type where you can drop your O-rings on. On a cone to find your appropriate size. So uh, I hope this was helpful. Um, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, it's uh, pretty easy. And like I said, this is 20 bucks and a flip chart. A little more expensive, but it's 40 bucks. Um, and I'm sure there's a, some other varieties as well, but these are the ones I use on a regular basis. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. But uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye bye.